monsieur. Ça va bien, oui Guten Tag, Herr. Je ne parle pas en allemand, mais je seulement comprends. Ich fais in Französisch. Croissant, mon ingénieur est forcé. Oh, 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 oh là là. Français, es est es Österreicher. Il n'est pas un chien. Vous êtes fou. Nein, 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 nein. Es ist Österreicher. Quel que soit. My name's Jose. I'm a restaurant manager, a chef, and a dad to two wonderful girls. Over the years, I've realized that we're used to using cake mixes that, quite frankly, taste like cardboard. So I realized it's time for a revolution. So sit back, take notes, and get ready for a pastry revolution. Okay, folks, so where does a croissant come from? Is it French? Is it Austrian? What country came up with this amazing pastry that we love to have for breakfast with cheese, ham, or chocolate? Okay, so back in 1683, the Austrians and the Turks were at war. During one of the night sieges, the Austrian bakers heard a scraping noise coming from underground. So they let the uh, Polish king know who helped him win the battle. Uh, when they defeated the Turks, the... Austrian bakers came up with this pastry that was in the shape of a crescent. Uh, they called a kipferl, and it was it was made because they wanted to commemorate the uh, the win. And the shape of the of the kipferl, the crescent, it was uh, the shape of the weapons that were used by the Turks. Now, if you fast forward to 17, 1770, there was an Austrian princess that married a French king, King Louis. Uh, her name was Marie Antoinette. Now, when she moved to France to live with her, her, new, her new king, her new husband, uh, she wanted to have that pastry that she had in her home country of Austria. But the French bakers did not know how to make it. They had no idea what the heck this kit for her was. So they sort of copied, so they sort of changed it a little bit and made it to what we know today as the croissant. So what, the croissant was invented by the Austrians, but it was re and reinvented by the French, all because of an Austrian princess that just loved her home country's food. Okay, folks, there are usually two kinds of butters, European style and good old American style. We'll be using European style for this recipe because it has a higher butterfat content. Butter is made of three components, fat, protein, and water. When we make croissants, we do something that's called laminating of the dough. When you laminate dough, you're basically are, uh, are laminating the uh, lean dough and the fat. So you alternate layers of lean dough, fat, lean dough, fat. Of course, these are going to be microscopic layers that are only visible under a microscope, although they appear as thick layers to the naked eye. So we'll be using this European step butter simply because it's got more flavor, because it's got more fat, and that's what we're going to use it. Okay, folks, so we're going to start by making the pre-fermented dough called a de trompe. It's going to be made with simple ingredients, flour, water, sugar, salt, butter, and of course, yeast and egg. It's gonna give it its richness, it's gonna give it its flavor, and it's so easy to make, it only takes about five minutes total. Let me show you. Okay, so we start by adding the flour to the mixing bowl, followed by the salt and the sugar, and then we add the yeast. Afterwards, we're gonna go ahead and add our egg, and then this amazing whole milk. And finally, we add our first butter to the mixture. We then go ahead and mix it to you from a homogenous dough with a paddle. Once the homogenous dough is there, we switch the paddle out to the hook, and we knead it for about two minutes. Once the dough is ready, I wrap it in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for 12 to 18 hours. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and shape my butter while, while the dough is resting in the refrigerator. I place it between two parchment papers, pound it down with this rolling pin. Afterwards, I will go ahead and roll this out to a square that measures uh, about 6 by 6 inches. Now you want to go ahead and place this butter in the refrigerator so it hardens properly. Make sure it's well covered though. Now that 12 to 18 hours have passed, we're going to lightly file the surface of the flour and we're going to roll the dough to a square that measures, oh, 10 by 10 inches. Now that our dough is ready, we're going to go ahead and put the block of butter down in the center of the dough. We put it down in the center of the dough and then we put the corners in. Now, this butter is going to give it its flakiness, its amazing, amazing texture, right? So you fold the corners in and then you tuck the corners in from the opposite end. Now, the reason you do this is so that the butter stays into the dough to then leak out when you're rolling it out. Right, so let's get to it. Okay, so now we lightly fire the surface and we're going to go ahead and roll this dough out to a square that measures, oh, 15 by 18 inches. Okay, so now we're gonna roll the dough out to 15 by 18 inches, and then we're gonna perform a single book fold. Basically like a trifold. You fold one end towards the center, then you fold the other end over it. We are now gonna go ahead and cover the dough with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes so the butter firms up. You do not want the butter to get soft, otherwise you end up with a gooey mess. 
Now that our dough has been resting for 30 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and roll it out again to 15 by 18 inches. We will then go ahead and do a dough book book fold. So basically you bring one end towards the center of the dough, you bring the other end towards the center of the dough, and then you fold those ends onto each other, creating a double book fold. Now we're gonna repeat the process of a single book fold, and then followed by a rest of 30 minutes in the refrigerator, and then we're gonna do the double book fold again. This will create those layers, guys. Again, these layers are what makes croissants amazing. Okay, so we're gonna roll the dough out to 20 by 15 inches and we're gonna fold them in half. This way we create a crease so we can cut the dough in half into perfectly equal portions. We will then cut out the uh, triangles that have a base of uh, four and a half to five inches. You wanna make sure they're the same size so your croissants are the same size and all even. Okay, to shape your croissants, you push the point of the triangle down and then you slowly roll by pulling forward and pushing back. This will ensure a tight, tight roll that will create your croissants in shape. We are now going to go ahead and brush the croissants with egg wash that's made with one egg and a tablespoon of water. This will give you a nice glossy crust that's slightly crispy. It's going to be a good texture combination with a fluffy interior with all those layers. Okay, so now we're going to cover them plastic wrap and let them rise for one to one and a half hours or into double it in size. We will then bake them off and then we will enjoy these. Okay, so once they're done rising, we're going to brush them with more egg wash to ensure they get that shiny color and that nice crispy crust. We then put them in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 12 minutes. These are amazing. Buttery, you get a little bit of that yeastiness because you let that dough rise in the uh, bridge every 12 to 18 hours. I mean, the layers are so delicate. They melt in your mouth. Mm. That's what you call a true croissant. Mm. Delicious. So yes, folks, so croissants are time consuming to make and require lots of patience. They are so worth it. I can't wait for y'all to try these amazing, amazing croissants. Make sure you make them for your next gathering, your next church meeting, your next holiday, your next whatever. Even for your casual, just why not? It's amazing. Can't wait for y'all to try it out. See you next time on Face Revolution. See you next time on Face Revolution. <laughs>